Alright guys, here we are at Aquarium Zen in Seattle, my favorite little neighborhood uh, shop. Steve, the owner, has always been really supportive of the channel. And so uh, we're going to do a little video here on the top five blackwater uh, fish. So, the list goes as followed, in no particular order really. But I want to say that catfish, and I know that's broad, that's really broad, that goes everything from my Tatia uh, Mosaica catfish and wood cats that really love black water. Like, they can go to 3.8, 4.0, like Coca-Cola dark water. Um, and then it goes, extends up to interesting Corydora, you know, species. Some of them do not go down to 5.5, which is the cutoff for black water. So check before, check yourself before you wreck yourself, basically. Um... <laughs> But there are many choices of Corydora catfish and many, many beautiful varieties. Uh, there are at least 300 out there uh, with Latin names known for over 150 of them. Uh, so that is going to be probably uh, my first, my first go-to. They're fairly easy to take care of and you can also um, have them in uh, a neutral environment as well all the way up to like 7.5 they're going to do okay um, we have some uh, just a, a selection of corridor in this cube tank here this is one way you could do it um, if you're going to do black water obviously you're going to have that tannin look but here is a good example of a black water tank so this is all sticks and you can either do no bottom or sand uh, Steve, the owner here, has said that everywhere he goes where he's seen black water in nature, he sees sand. And so that means there's nothing buffering the water, um, not even rock or anything like that. And so he recommends using an additive or peat or sphagnum moss for black water. Um, and uh, so that's kind of a little tip. So let's go to our number two, and we'll also film a couple more Corydora species while we're in here. Um, let's see, we got Corydora sturbi, sturbi Corydora with those beautiful bronze fins, and uh, they light up in the natural sunlight. So the next species I'm gonna go to and say number four is the Neon Tetras. So we've got blue neons, green neons, all sorts of tetras. Uh, once again, these tetras are great for black water, that's where they're from, and you just want to check. So if they also can be very interactive and they can kind of be schooling fish, um, but they can be an interactive and interesting fish. So. Uh, check before you get them uh, what the parameters are because some like the lemon tetras or bleeding hearts or whatever they may be uh, are a little bit uh, different than the smaller tetras and the rummy nose and things like that that can withstand a little bit lower pH. So moving on I'm gonna say number three on the list is going to be the dwarf cichlids. So for black water you can get beautiful epistogramme. They come in many many colors. Um, you can see the ones here with the orange flare that's probably an orange flash or something along those lines. Uh, here's one out in the open. They're very fun to breed. Uh, very colorful. It's close to an African dwarf cichlid or a crebensis if you're familiar with those. And uh, here's some checkerboard cichlids also, which are another Amazonian dwarf cichlid that's uh, lots of fun. So I know these categories are broad, but they're kind of fun. And so, you know, this is another type of tetra right here. And these are, these are just beautiful. Check out the color on these wild caught, uh, just beautiful tetras. So as far as plants go for your thing, this is an aside for your black water tank, you basically got the option of a little bit of bacopa, uh, some water lettuce, and then really what you wanna do is cheat, and if you do like some sort of paludarium or vivarium, you can use your uh, sphagnum moss or your peat down in a tank and make an area like this and you can kind of cheat and use the the soil and then kind of cheat some substrate and then have more variety but 
uh, sword ferns and things like that, you can kind of add some life to your tank. So that's a little tip while we're on our way to number two. So number two, I'm going to say are the gourami. And so gourami are an interesting fish in that they're another large uh, category. We've got some interesting chocolate gouramis and things like that in here. And also I believe there is, let's get rid of this glare if we can, it's a sunny day outside. But we've got small little fish in here and we're looking for the gourami. There's a gourami. So beautiful uh, fish. We've got uh, chocolate gouramis. Licorice gouramis are another great fish. Uh, for a black water tank they can withstand very low waters and they are also critically endangered in some parts so that's another option I think we've got some more over here possibly but another one that deserves honorable mention is going to be pencil fish of different sorts so we have pencil fish up here um, you know there's some really beautiful uh, pencil fish also that can withstand the water but yet again let's see here get the, the glare off uh, once again you want to make sure that you know your fish and you know um, which fish it is and how low pH it can go because the difference between 5.5 and 4.5 is a big difference um, but yet again, I just wanted to show you the Apistos from another angle now that you can kind of see that color. So Apistos can be really, really um, beautiful, cockatoides and things like that. Uh, so that's going to be my other recommendation. Here you can see the checkerboard cichlid all colored up with displays. So that's another really cool little uh, display that you're catching here. Um, lastly, I'm going to say that angelfish. Uh, they're good beginner fish uh, and you can also take them all the way through you can take them all the way through the hobby and right up into uh, you know breeding and all sorts of harder uh, situations with them but here is a beautiful example of a locally bred blue uh, angelfish and they are really awesome little fish well, these ones are actually pretty good size. These are two, two and a half, three inches tall. And uh, never mind the rainbow fish they're in with. Now, the other nice thing about most of the fish I've mentioned, so here's more tetras. Uh, these are cardinal tetras. I like cardinals especially in the dark water. They really have a nice color even in the dark light. They have that neon look that they have their name for rather than just being a bright blue. And you can see in this dimmer lit tank that uh, one, they're doing fine with water that a puffer's in, so you can keep them with your other fish if you need to quarantine them in something else, that's fine, just acclimate them to the water, and, uh, you know, here's some more, uh, more wildish type angelfish, so there's a lot of angelfish out there, a lot of options, uh, everything from small little silvers to black and whites to kois, here we've got some more stir-by corridors. There was too much glare on that other tank, so let's see if we can catch uh, one of them in here. Uh, yeah, there we are. So, stir they're an active, fun little fish. In here we have some Julii corridors, so another fun one. And then when I said catfish, we're going to also kind of include uh, some plecos. So, not all of them can go black water. In fact, a lot of them can't, but some can and check before you go in and uh, dump your plecos into dark water. Now, the other honorable mention is going to be uh, other sorts of like licorice fish and um, fish that live in the rice paddies. These like cleaner water in marshes, so don't confuse your paradise fish and stuff with your gouramis, even though they can kind of look similar. That's just a little tip for folks who are newer at this, um, but really beautiful uh, options. These pearls, they do not like quite as low as, um, as a black water tank, but they'll go low. So I just wanted to thank Steve for letting us film in here at Aquarium Zen in Seattle at 46th and uh, 
Roosevelt. Just a reminder, you can come in here and at any pet store if you're not in the area, but basically there's all sorts of wood selections out there from uh, manzanita to uh, spider wood and uh, Malaysian driftwood, and that will help lower your pH and increase your tannins, give your fish a place to hide, especially if you're doing a low um, a low bottom or a bare bottom tank I should say but I wanted to give a shout out to also this Sarah water conditioner that Steve is carrying he is a fan of it basically it's pure tannins pH lowering all sorts of nutrients and things <clears throat> you add that once a week or during your water changes and it's no muss no fuss a great uh, little conditioner for black water effect uh, it's kind of interesting that they have uh, a picture of uh, shrimp on here. <laughs> find that interesting. Um, but I suppose that does lower the pH a little bit. But to lower it to true like 5.5 and less, which is what we're talking about when we're talking about like an Amazon or a Borneo or Thai, you know, stream or rice field that is filled with uh, flooded uh you don't need to use you're going to need to use something more than what you would just use for shrimp so also another option is these peat uh pellets they're another thing you can load them into your canister filter you can load them into a media bag uh and that's another easy way to drop your ph it's a little less scientific and you don't just measure the amount and it correlates and Bing, bada boom it's done uh, another thing to mention is that the bacteria that grows on your filters uh, the biological bacteria will actually um, sometimes help buffer and so will certain stones and substrates and and that can cause your pH to not quite get as low as you want so even though it lowers it lower than neutral in many cases with the Amazonia it's not gonna lower it uh, all the way down to those lower numbers that I'm talking about, like 5.5 and things like that. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this little tour. I wanted to thank Steve for being an awesome uh, store owner and here at Aquarium Zen, uh, a great store that has all sorts of fish. He brought in my Tatia uh, catfish, the ones that were allegedly ninja catfish. Turned out they were something a little different. Um, but on his order guide, that's what they said. So it's kind of um, with corridors and wood cats, uh, sometimes even the distributors can't distinguish subtleties in the breeds. But this is a great store. If you're in Seattle, come on in, check it out. Take care of yourselves, take care of your fish, and uh, have a great day. Swim on.